Can come into life from Algiers and the headlines. Algeria announced that the first day of Eid al Fitr, marking the end of the holy month of Ramadan, is today, Friday. Amid growing calls for a truce to be observed during Eid al Fitr, fighting is continuing between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary forces in the capital, Al Khartoum. Always on the occasion of Eid al Fitr, Zionist occupation forces launched a massive campaign of arrests, including 17 Palestinians from the West Bank. In Europe, Russian Ministry of Defense announced that it is that the airborne forces had encircled the city of Bakhmut from the north and south and had taken control of three new neighborhoods. Hello, Ghana, welcome. Algeria, like several other Arab and Muslim countries around the world, has announced that the first day of Eid al Fitr, marking the end of the holy month of uh, Ramadan is today, Friday, after the sighting of uh, the crescent moon was confirmed in the province of Mustaranim and Wadsouf. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Jordan and Sudan, among others, are also celebrating on Friday the blessed Eid al-Fitr festival. In the same line of thought and on the occasion of the advance of the blessed Eid al-Fitr, the President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Tiboun, addressed in a message of congratulations the wishes uh, he the wish he extend his best wishes and hails to solidarity shown throughout the national territory during the holy festive month of Ramadan. <laughs> بأسماء آيات التهاني بمناسبة حلول عيد الفطر المبارك حري بنا أن ننوه بما شاهدناه من تضامن وأعمال خيرية في كل ربوع الوطن وعند جاليتنا في الخارج خلال هذا الشهر الفضيل مما يشكل سندا للدولة في خدمة المواطن وتلبية احتياجاته أتمنى أن تكون التسهيلات التنقل التي أقرتها الدولة لفائدة جاليتنا في الخارج قد ساهمت في لم العائلة الجزائرية also, the Algerian president renewed his call for the need to make prevail reason and the supreme interest of Sudan حالة الفرقة والاحتراب التي طالت أشقاءنا في السودان مجددين دعوتنا لهم بضرورة تغليب لغة العقل والمصلحة العليا للوطن للحفاظ على أمتنا العربية والإسلامية also, President uh, Tabun stressed that uh, the celebration of Eid al-Fitr should not make the international community forget the suffering of the Palestinians in the occupied territories and the sanctity of Al-Aqsa Mosque. يجب أن لا ينسينا احتفالنا بعيد الفطر المبارك معاناة إخواننا في فلسطين المحتلة وانتهاك حرمة المسجد الأقصى. أولى القبلتين وثالث الحرمين أمام مرأة العالم وصمته. With presidency still, the president of the Republic Abdel Majid Tibbon received a phone call from his Tunisian counterpart Qais Saied, during which they exchanged best wishes on occasions of the advent of the blessed Eid al-Fitr. President Saied expressed his best wishes to the Algerian president and people for progress and prosperity. For his part, President Tibbon extends his congratulations to his Tunisian counterpart, expressing his wishes to him and the brotherly Tunisian people for continued prosperity and well-being. 
In the same line of thought, the President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Tabon, received also a phone call from his Egyptian counterpart, Abdel Fattah Sisi, in which he congratulated him on the occasion of the advent of the blessed Eid al Fitr, wishing him and the Algerian people further progress and prosperity, according to a statement by the Algerian presidency. For his part, President Tabon extended his congratulations to his Egyptian counterpart, expressing his wishes to him and the brotherly Egyptian people for continued prosperity and well-being. To a different matter now, at least 85 people were killed while over 322 others were injured in a stampede that occurred during a charity distribution event in Yemen's capital, Sana'a, on Thursday. Hundreds of people had crowded into school to receive the donations. The dead and injured have been moved to the nearby hospitals and those responsible for the distribution were taken into custody. Fighting is continuing between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary forces in the capital Khartoum and other cities for the sixth consecutive day amid growing calls for a truce to be observed during the blessed Eid al-Fitr. Mohammed Khatou. Fierce fighting is still raging in Sudan, even if the two parties announced their agreement to a 24-hour truce, which unfortunately didn't hold. The number of civilian casualties rose to 270 and 2,600 wounded. Amid growing violence, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called on Thursday for a three-day ceasefire to mark the holiday of Eid al-Fitr and to allow civilians trapped in conflict zones to escape and to seek medical treatment, food and other essential supplies. As an immediate priority, I appeal for a ceasefire to take place for at least three days, marking the Eid al-Fitr celebrations to allow civilians trapped in conflict zones to escape and to seek medical treatment, food, and other essential supplies. The Arab League also called for a ceasefire in Sudan during Eid al-Fitr, as the Secretary General Ahmed Abu al-Ghaid has offered mediation between the conflicting military parties in the country. It is a, a good occasion for all Muslims to, um, to observe the uh, feast with, um, you know, without hostilities, uh, for the, and it's an opportunity as well for the civilians to get their basic needs and to end uh, uh, this catastrophic situation they are facing in Sudan. Meanwhile, U.S. State Department on Thursday urged the parties in Sudan to extend the ceasefire through the end of Eid al-Fitr festival. In coordination with our allies and partners, we urge the SAF and RSF to extend the current ceasefire through Sunday, April 23rd, which would be the end of Eid. The crisis in Sudan erupted last Saturday after a disagreement over the integration of a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces into Sudan's army as part of a transition towards civilian rule. In uh, the same matter, the Sudanese army announced on Thursday that 177 technical personnel from the Egyptian Air Force who had been detained by the Rapid Support Forces a few days earlier in Marawi were handed over to the Arab Republic of Egypt. Personnel were evacuated from Dongola Airport in the north of the country via four Egyptian military transport planes, according to a statement from the Sudanese army. The Egyptian army confirmed that it had coordinated with the Sudanese authorities to carry out the, the evacuation. The World Health Organization in the Eastern Mediterranean announced on Thursday that the ongoing armed clashes in Sudan have so far left some 330 people dead and 3,200 wounded. The World Health Organization has also urged for a safe corridor and humanitarian truce to be agreed upon for health workers, patients and ambulances in Sudan. A statement from the Algerian presidency said that the Algerian French Joint Committee for History and Memory held its first meeting yesterday throughout video conference. The statement added that it was agreed during the meeting to address all issues related to the colonial period, resistance and the glorious war of liberation. 
It was also agreed to continue consultations and contacts in order to develop a future work program with the identification of the next meetings of the Joint Committee. The UN Security Council held a close consultation session on the United Nations mission for the referendum in Western Sahara. During the session, the personal, uh, the personal envoy of the Secretary General for Western uh, Sahara, Stefan de Mestura, briefed the Council on uh, the informal bilateral consultations he held last month in New York with the parties to conflict, including the Polisario Front and Morocco, as well as with Algeria and Mauritania and members of the Friends of Western Sahara Group. In a statement uh, to the UN mission, the UN envoy to Libya, Abdullah Batili, on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, called on all Libyan political actors, military and security leaders, supervisors or other superiors and community representatives institutions and authorities to come together on one word and on a spirit of compromise in order to establish a clear and unified path toward lasting peace, stability, and prosperity in Libya. Batili added that this is also an occasion to urge all Libyan parties to stand behind the United Nations endeavors and the overall path of enabling election to take place during this year. In the Middle East now, Zionist occupation forces launched a massive campaign of arrest, including 17 Palestinians from the West Bank. The entity forces arrested a freed prisoner from the North Shems camp. They also arrested a young man from the village of Jalboun, northeast of Jenin, and another freed prisoner west of the city. It is also arrested two Palestinians in Nablus, a young man from Damascus Gate area, and three others were and a storm the Reis Shahdan neighborhood. In his uh, first wartime visit to Kiev, NATO chief, or the NATO chief Jan Stoltenberg definitively declared Thursday that Ukraine's rightful place is in the military alliance and pledged more support for the country. Nabil Khazini. This square in the capital, Kiev, has witnessed a flocking of Western leaders in the last months. The moment this time was for NATO chief Jan Stoltenberg, who made a surprise visit to the Ukrainian capital. How are you? Fine. Great to see you. He said from Kiev that Ukraine's future is in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO chief said that Ukraine's accession would be raised during the Vilnius summit in which Volodymyr Zelensky might participate. Let me be clear, Ukraine's rightful place is in the Euro-Atlantic family. Ukraine's rightful place is in NATO. And over time, our support will help you make this possible. Following Stoltenberg's arrival in Kiev, the Kremlin quickly warned that Ukraine must not be allowed to join the Western military alliance. Moscow has repeatedly pointed to the expansion of the military alliance towards its borders in recent years, citing fears that Ukraine would be admitted. Preventing Ukraine's participation in NATO is still one of the goals of the special military operation, because otherwise it will be a serious, significant threat to our country's security. The surprise trip comes at a highly sensitive time when Ukrainian officials are pushing the Western military alliance to give Kiev a clearer path to membership. NATO chief is scheduled to attend a United States-led meeting of countries supplying weapons to Ukraine at Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov arrived in Havana, Cuba from Nicaragua as part of his tour of Latin America. Lavrov met with his Cuban counterpart Bruno Rodriguez Barilla to discuss joint cooperation between the two countries as well as regional and international issues. Cuba was uh, the last stop on Lavrov's tour, which also include visits to Brazil and Venezuela as well as Nicaragua. The Russian Ministry of Defense announced that 
its airborne forces had encircled the city of Bakhmut from the north and south and had taken control of three new neighborhoods in the city. The Russian army claimed that its forces had killed 380 Ukrainian soldiers in the battles where Donetsk and 75 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kherson Liman battles. The Russian authorities also reported that its forces had destroyed the Ukrainian Central Command Unit near Bakhmut, which had been subjected to the shelling that also hit command and control centers of the armed forces. Task and Army Air Force, missile and artillery units of the Russian Armed Forces in the last 24 hours hit 86 Ukrainian artillery units, manpower and machinery in 127 areas. The Bakhmut Central Command Unit was hit. Also, three command and observation posts of the 25th Airborne Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces in the 116th Territorial Defense Brigade were hit. Demonstrators in the, the Alsace region greeted French President Emmanuel Macron with boos and banging on pots, expressing their refusal to pass the pension reform law. Hussein Burkan. Public anger continued to mount as President Macron attempts to approach the demonstrators and hear their concerns. The use of booze and pots to greet the French president is becoming a common occurrence as anger and frustration grow over the controversial pension reform law. Anger must be heard. I am not deaf to it. This anger is being expressed and expected nothing else. But it won't stop me from going on the move. It's not the pot that will push France forward. Opposition leaders criticize Macron's decision to push forward with a reform, saying that it is a separation from reality, giving the widespread opposition to the law. They argue that France is wealthy enough to provide for its citizens. But the problem lies in the distribution of wealth. No one believes anymore that there is no money. France has never been so rich, and multinational corporations in France have never been so rich. The problem is the distribution of wealth. So yes, we should go and look for money in its place, which is to say in the pockets of businessmen. Macron hopes to regain some of his declining popularity by engaging in dialogue with the protesters and addressing their concerns. However, it remains to be seen whether his efforts will be enough to call the growing unrest in France. U.S. President Joe Biden met with his Colombian counterpart Gustavo Petro on, in the White House. On Thursday, the two men discussed such issues as climate change, migration and drug trafficking, among other matters. During the meeting, Biden said more could be done to deepen cooperation between the two countries. Together, Colombia and the United States are leading an effort to deal with climate change and to, uh, I've been working for a long time, we make, we're going to make a $500 million commitment to uh, deal with uh, preserving the Amazon. And working through uh, the America's Partnership for Economic Prosperity, uh, we're working to grow our economies from the bottom up and the middle out, not from the top down. And now more international news all over the world in this report. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met with Sweden's Prime Minister in Stockholm on Thursday and said he looked forward to calling Sweden an ally as it seeks to join NATO. Both Sweden and neighboring Finland apply for NATO membership in May 2022, following Russia's military operation in Ukraine. Finland became the 31st member of the world's biggest military alliance on April the 4th. However, Sweden bid had stalled due to opposition from Hungary and Turkey, whose president says his country must first resolve its disputes with Stockholm. Following a strand of tornadoes that occurred Wednesday night in Oklahoma, at least three people have died. The National Weather Service reports that eight tornadoes confirmed to have touched down in the state and overall. At least 15 tornadoes have been reported in three states, Oklahoma, Kansas and Lova. Search and rescue operations are still going on in some areas as more severe storms threaten 50 million people from Texas to Wisconsin. 
Costa Rica's Segura, a new security initiative unveiled by President Rodrigo Chavez, aims to reduce the nation's rise in crime and violence. Chavez emphasized that six bills of law would be introduced to bring the nation's peace and safety. The six bills of law include the law for the extradition of nationals for international drug trafficking and terrorism crimes, the law to restore public safety and control criminals, a reform to the law on arms control to punish those who carry them illegally, modernization of telephone tapping, a law to address juvenile justice, and a law on the prison system. After a fatal on-set shooting that claimed the life of cinematographer Helena Hutchins 18 months ago, production on Alec Baldwin Western film Rust will resume on Thursday. After New Mexico prosecutor have decided to drop criminal charges against actor Alec Baldwin, who is playing the leading role in the film. According to Melina Spadan, an attorney for Rust movie productions, it will prohibit any use of working weapons and any form of ammunition. And in our news bulletin with sport in Italy, Juventus 15-point penalty of a transfer dealings has been reversed, with the Italy's highest sporting court ordering the case to be re-examined. Al Bianconeri was punished in January after being found guilty of false accounting, but the club has moved from the seventh to the third place in Serie A, yet it could still be punished at later date when a new hearing is held. And with eight games left in the season, AC Milan have been knocked out, out of the Champions League places by Juventus, while AC Rome drops to fourth. Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for being with us in this late hour. All I can say at the end, Eidoko Mubarak, and good night.